Hey everyone, we've got an iPhone 6 that's come in, it was repaired yesterday with a screen replacement but uh, the customer's still having issues with touch down one side. Now, I think I know what the problem is because there was some damage on the connector yesterday but I thought it was going to be alright, clearly it might not be. So we're going to take this apart and see if we can fix it up. When we have a look at the connectors of the phone, we can see there's small bits of damage, you know, bit impact here, a little bit down here. And these are from situations where people have either used metal implements or too much force to lift off connectors. You can actually see there's a scrape there. Someone's used something like metal to come in and try and pick that connector off, which is why it's always good to use your thumbnail or something like that, something soft something that will deform well before you do any damage to these connectors. These look exceptionally okay, so we'll go and have a look at the screen itself. So immediately the first thing that I can see is there's this deformation going on, and this is a touch connector, and that relates to the fact that the customer is experiencing touch issues. What we're going to do is, we're not going to try and bend that out or anything like that, we're just going to replace the connector and hopefully we'll be alright. For connectors like this, we don't need a lot of heat. We're only about 250, 260. Just put down a fair amount of flux. It just helps it to not damage the FPC connector, the flex. And we're doing it behind a metal shield here, just so we don't upset the phone screen. The key is to have a bit of patience and take it as an opportunity to practice your skills of removing connectors without melting them even though we're not going to use this one. I've gone up to 270 and 25% air. The important thing with doing work like this is to look at what's happening to the connector or look at what's happening with what you're working on and adjusting the air temperature and speed accordingly. Because every day can be a little bit different. Don't get fixated on using the same numbers if it's not doing the job. Like today, it's definitely not doing the job. Finally, it's starting to happen. There we go. To make it easier, we're going to use some leaded solder and I'll make it lower temperature to put the new connector back on. Easiest thing for us to do is to just take a donor connector from another broken screen of the same type. And as you can see, this one looks quite okay. So we'll take that off and then put it on the screen. Use a fair bit more flux this time again, and that helps protect the connector from getting any sort of hot air, direct hot air damage. A common thing people like to do is to heat these flexes from the back so they don't have to put air directly onto the connector in order to prevent it from melting. But I find if you just keep an eye on the plastic and practice, you don't have to do that sort of thing. Because it is impractical to melt from the back in some situations, particularly if you've got a large circuit board and maybe you have parts on the other side that you don't want to damage from all the heat. Okay, so this is coming along nicely. Let's give it a little bit more. There we go. Fortunately, there's plenty of flux left there. And now if we reheat it, you have to start from a little way back because you don't want the air to blow the connector off. And with that leaded solder and the flux and the fact that everything's still pretty warm, that should go down pretty quickly and evenly. That looks perfectly good. While it's still warm, we try to clean off the excess flux. If you don't clean off the excess flux, when you connect it back into the phone, you will gum up the connectors and you will cause a problem with electrical connectivity. 
So make sure you clean off the flux. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it definitely has to remove a good portion of it. And also make sure you don't get any random bits of trash in there. Bits of hair and things like that can cause a lot of problems. Next thing we want to do is to check that all our pins are connected. So just go along and use the tweezer tips and just give the pins all a little bit of a tap and none of them should move. Fantastic. Okay, let's reassemble and see how things go. Everything is looking good again. So what we had here is we replaced the screen on this phone yesterday, but it seems like the replacement screen had a defect on the connector. Even though there already was damage inside this phone itself that I noticed yesterday, I failed to notice the damage connector on the screen itself. So this is an interesting coincidence case. Anyway, we took the connector from an old screen, put it onto the new one, and we're all good again. Even though iPhone 6 screens are very cheap these days to buy, it still doesn't hurt to make a replacement when you can and save yourself a little bit of money and also save a little bit more wastage. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.